Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about the future of consumer single board computers. Back in 2012, the first Raspberry Pi was launched, and whilst it was not the first SBC, its $35 price tag did dramatically change the market for low cost, small form factor consumer hardware. Since that time, a lot has changed, with the average price of an ARM SBC having risen, whilst the price of some small form factor x86 computers has fallen. In addition, Linux SBC distros have generally got heavier, 32-bit Linux support has diminished, and user expectations for SBC hardware and software have increased. Add in supply chain pressures and competition from more powerful microcontrollers, and it's pretty certain that the market for consumer SBCs will not return to how it was a few years ago. So, if you're a maker or a low-cost SBC enthusiast like I am, what do all of these things imply for the future of consumer single-board computers? As far as I can tell, aside from industrial buyers, there are three key categories of people who purchase single-board computers. Firstly, we have makers, those who want to use an SBC in a project, for example in a robot or for home automation. Secondly, there are those who want a low-cost small computer, either to use as a small desktop or for retro gaming as a NAS to be a print server, applications like that. And finally, there are die-hard SBC enthusiasts who often purchase the latest hardware with no particular use in mind. And to understand how the SBC market is evolving, we need to think about the most cost-effective options for all of these different types of consumer. As I said in the introduction, in the past few years, prices have significantly changed. Five years ago, most SBCs with an ARM processor cost between $5 for a Raspberry Pi Zero up to about $100 with an average price of, say, $50 to $60. Meanwhile, whilst you could get some x86 SBCs for under $100, most were priced in the $200 to $300 bracket. And outside of the SBC marketplace, it was very hard to buy a mini PC with an x86 processor for less than a few hundred dollars. And when this was the state of the market, most makers and enthusiasts purchased ARM SBCs unless they had a specific need for a more powerful x86 model. And critically, SBCs with an ARM processor were also the natural choice for those wanting a low-cost computer. Fast forward to today, and whilst the price of x86 SBCs has not really changed, on average, ARM boards do cost considerably more. Well, OK, in theory you can buy a Raspberry Pi Zero for $10, and a 2GB Raspberry Pi 4 for $45. But in practice, and for reasons I'll discuss in a minute, many ARM SBCs are now priced in the $75 to $200 bracket with some RK3588 boards now costing considerably more. Meanwhile, Mini X86 PCs can now be purchased from about $100. And given that many companies have been using small form factor hardware for several years, there are now also a lot of renewed small form factor business PCs available, also priced from around $100. Many of those who want a low-cost small computer are therefore now buying mini PCs or renewed business hardware. And even some makers and SBC enthusiasts are now casting their purchasing net more widely. Basically, many people are now realizing that, for example, for the price of a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 with a micro SD card and a power supply and a nice case like this, for the price of these items, you can alternatively purchase a mini PC, something like this, which costs $100. Or you could purchase a piece of renewed business hardware like this, which again costs from about $100. Now, admittedly, the SBC option, the ARM SBC option, still has certain advantages. It uses less energy, it's got better connectivity. But there is no doubt the market is changing. 
So let's delve a bit more deeply into why this is the case. Now, one of the things that has forced up the specification and hence price of ARM SBCs is that the Linux distros and applications they generally run are getting heavier. More bloated software is sadly a common curse in computing and means that more CPU power and more memory are now needed to run things as well as we once did. To demonstrate the point, here I've got an original 512MB RAM Raspberry Pi 1B, and this is running an early version of what was called Raspbian. But it's still pretty fluid. If we go down to the menu, you'll see it's uh, pretty responsive. And let's go, for example, oh, lots of things under other, masses of things under other. Anyway, let's run up, for example, a LibreOffice Writer, like that. It'll take a little bit of time. It's not going to be instant on this 700 megahertz single core system, but it is going to be usable. It's going to come up in a reasonable period of time. Give it a second. Come on, you can do it. There we are. We've got a working word processor. And let's also try and run up a browser. I think it's called a NetSurf, the browser down here. It'll take a second to respond, but it will get there. I'm sure it'll get there in the end. Come on, browser, you can do it. There it is. And we've got a browser working on the system. We can go across to a different page, something like that. It'll still work OK. There we are. Takes a second to load in the images, but it does work. Although if we try to go to somewhere complicated like YouTube, well, this will take time and then fail as websites as well as operating systems and applications have got a lot more bloated over the past decade. But even so, for many things, this Raspberry Pi 1B with its original distro offer a slow but usable desktop computing experience. So let's see what happens if we close this down like that. And then I'm going to turn off the power. And I'll now take out this SD card. We didn't have a micro SD card in the original Pi, it was an SD card. I'm going to plug in another card, and this contains a fresh install of the February 2023 version of Raspberry Pi OS Legacy, which is the operating system now provided by Raspberry Pi for this board. And if we call on the magic of filmmaking, we can see how the boot time for the current OS compares to the original. So let's turn on the power. And of course, we'll speed on through. And there we are. The original operating system has won. So let's now speed on through to let the current operating system also finish. And what a different result. Clearly proof that the older operating system boots much more quickly than the new one. And although my point is really now made, let's also try and run up some software. The new operating system is still pretty fluid. There's no problems with the fluidity on this system. But let's now launch, for example, LibreOffice Writer. Again, we don't expect it to be fast. It wasn't fast on the old one. It's not going to be fast on the new one. But let's just see how much more slow it is. It's going to take quite a long time. And you might be thinking this is an irrelevant test because things have moved on. But do remember that a Raspberry Pi 0 and 0W and 02W still have 512 megabytes of RAM, just like this original Raspberry Pi 1B. So this kind of desktop performance is the sort of thing you'll get on a Raspberry Pi 0 today. And as you can see, it's taking a very long time to get into LibreOffice, clearly a lot more time than we took with 10-year-old software. And we will try to launch a web browser. Let's just try that. We'll uh, launch it from up there. Although I'll let you know straight away, it isn't going to work. You can't launch the web browser on this system. I imagine it's because there simply isn't enough memory on the board. And so what we're demonstrating here, what we've clearly shown is that due to bloated software, it's getting harder and harder to create a very low cost SBC that offers usable desktop performance. Something else to be aware of is the decline of 32-bit operating systems, with many Linux distros now only supporting a 64-bit version. Given that 64-bit operating systems generally require 4 gigabytes of RAM to function well, this is also very significant for low-cost SBCs, some of which still have 1 or 2 gigabytes of memory, or in the case of the Raspberry Pi Zero models, half a gigabyte of memory. Now, 
right now Debian does still support the 32-bit version. And this is significant because Raspberry Pi OS is based on Debian. So we still have a 32-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS. It's still really the dominant version. But looking into the future, there is no guarantee that 32-bit Linux support is going to continue. And so it is likely that in the future, most SBCs will require at least four gigabytes of memory. And this will inevitably push up the average price of a single board computer. Many SBC manufacturers advertise that you can use their boards as small desktop PCs, and there is no doubt that some people do just that. However, the expectations that people have of a desktop PC are changing. It used to be you expected a desktop PC to be able to be used for word processing, spreadsheets, a bit of email, accessing the web, maybe a bit of photo editing, and playing audio, things like that, and that still is the case today. But also today, people expect you can use a desktop PC to stream high-definition video in a browser. And that's something that sadly a lot of ARM SBCs struggle with, because they often don't have the drivers to enable them to do it. The hardware's capable of it, but the GPU drivers often aren't available. And this is one of the reasons I think many people are now starting to go towards boards like this rather than SBCs, because if you buy a mini PC running Windows, it will be able to stream streaming media perfectly happily in a browser in a way that many SBCs can't. The other issue in terms of user expectations moving from software to hardware is that we should remember that when the Raspberry Pi came out, one of the real reasons for launching it was to get more people coding, to get more people experimenting with a computer, and it was very, very successful with that. So the Raspberry Pi was launched with the minimum specification required to actually give you a, a fully functional computer that you could afford to experiment on. And if you messed it up, you hadn't messed up a desktop PC or a laptop, something far more expensive. And I think we need to keep this in mind when we think about expectations for future SBCs. I often find people saying in the comments on this channel, you know, what will we see in the Raspberry Pi 5? And they say things like, well, of course, it'll need EMMC flash storage, and it have to have lots and lots of memory, and an M.2 slot for a drive, and even some people say it should have socketed RAM, which means it wouldn't even still be a single bore computer. But even ignoring the semantics, many of the things people want to be added to single bore computers would make them incredibly expensive. And that kind of defeats the point of certainly a board like the Raspberry Pi in the first place. And so I hope that when we do see a Raspberry Pi 5, hopefully in 20. 24, but they will maintain the price point. I'm sure they will maintain the price point, and that will inevitably constrain the kind of hardware specification that can be provided. Over the past few years, supply chain disruption has limited the availability of the Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. When it comes to the Raspberry Pi, the situation should be fully resolved by the second half of 2023. That's what Eben Upton told us in an interview with this channel back in December 2022. So we'll cross our fingers that the Raspberry Pi availability issue will get back to normal fairly soon. However, I still think there are things we can reflect on which has resulted from the supply chain issues we've seen. Not least, it's become increasingly obvious that some single board computers have never been economically viable to manufacture. Thinking particularly about, for example, the Raspberry Pi Zero, as Eben told us in that interview, they've always been searching around for odd bits of manufacturing capacity as they become available to get the board manufactured. And that's not a good situation. And now at least the price of the Raspberry Pi Zero has been increased from $5 to $10, I'd much rather the cheaper boards were even more expensive than that if they need to be, if it means they can become available. It doesn't help anybody if a board is so uh, uneconomic to manufacture that it can't be kept in a reasonable level of supply. The other thing I think which has stemmed from the supply chain issues we've seen for the Pi and other SBCs is that some makers have started to use microcontrollers when they haven't used microcontrollers ever before, or they haven't used them in certain types of projects before. Not least people have been using the Raspberry Pi Pico in projects where they might have used, for example, a Raspberry Pi Zero. And you might have seen on this channel, I did, for example, this project earlier this year with a Raspberry Pi Pico, where it's equipped here with a VGA output and a keyboard input and a microSD card slot. 
And this is running the MM Basic programming language created by Jeff Graham. This is a boot to basic computer created with a microcontroller, but it could be used for all sorts of robotics and other applications. And I suspect that going ahead, the fact that makers have had to live without a good supply of SBCs for a few years means they're going to change a little bit what they do in the future. They're going to be more likely to use microcontrollers and less likely in some circumstances to use a single board computer. So, what does everything I've talked about mean for the future? Well, I would offer five predictions. Firstly, I think there'll be an increasing diversity of low-cost consumer small form factor computers, with makers and computing enthusiasts using not just SBCs, but also low-cost mini PCs and renewed hardware. Indeed, from many messages and conversations I've had over the past six months or so, it's pretty clear this is already starting to happen. Secondly, I expect that SBCs in general will become more industrially focused, just as they were long before the Raspberry Pi existed. This said, I also expect there will be a strong market for consumer SBCs costing up to about $75. However, I also imagine that SBCs costing $100 or more will increasingly struggle in the consumer market unless they offer key maker features such as GPUs or MPUs for machine learning. So, for example, I expect NVIDIA's Jetson range to continue to do well outside of industry. And finally, I also think we're going to see a greater use of microcontrollers in the maker space which is again a trend we can already witness. But what do you think? Please let us all know down in the comments section. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.